So the point of this video is to go over my little journey here where I found out that Fallout 1 and 2 are actually super duper good and I understand why the fans get sort of mad or bent out of shape with Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. That isn't to say though that Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 are bad games. I got to play them in a very interesting order. So I had access to Fallout 1 and 2 way back in the day and I was just a, a cinder block head. I, I didn't know how to get into Fallout 1 and 2. There's a lot of things that kind of do gatekeeping essentially from newbie players and you do have to kind of do a little bit of homework or a lot of trial and error in order to get anywhere at the start of those games. But once you get the ball rolling, it starts to show its magic. Like I said, I tried those games. I didn't do a great job with them. Then Fallout 3 gets announced. Everybody's super hyped for it. I knew about the Fallout franchise and now that they were changing up the gameplay and everything, I was like, okay, it's time for me to give this another try loved Fallout 3. I got every single achievement for it for the original Xbox 360, put hundreds of hours into it. It was a pure joyride. And then Fallout New Vegas comes out, another fantastic title, although my experience was a little bit glitchy and I, I just didn't have as much of a great time with it as a lot of hardcore fans did. That isn't to say it wasn't still another fantastic romp through the wasteland. It was just that I didn't get that like oh man this one's vastly superior sort of takeaway from it like a lot of other people did then there's fallout 4 that one's very very debated about whether or not it's good and i personally think it's fantastic first of all it takes place in boston which is where i originally hail from so a lot of the locales were really sentimental to me but more important than even that i always wanted a fallout game with a little bit of tree growth and stuff like that. So Fallout 1, 2, and 3 and New Vegas, they're all desolate, very like arid, like, you know, deserty sort of environments. But with Fallout 4, we finally had, yes, a post apocalyptic world, but you know, you got some bushes and you got some trees and, and stuff like that. So I ended up loving like the songs, the theming, some of the story elements, every, I just ended up loving it a lot. But I do understand that a lot of people did not like it because it really extracted out a lot of role-playing elements. So now with all that said, these are my thoughts on three and four in New Vegas. And then finally, I think in 2022 or 2021, I finally played Fallout 1 and 2 on my Steam Deck. It was easier to get access to it or to invest in it because there was a portability factor to it. And I finally played them and I finally realized Fallout 1 and 2 are just amazing, amazing games. And if you ever tried to give them a chance and you also had the same sort of journey as I did where it just felt too overwhelming or too hard at the start, please, t I'm telling you, just look up some beginner's guides on YouTube and stuff for like stat allocation and stuff like that and go from there because you are missing out on some of the best games ever to exist on this planet. They, they are just utterly fantastic. One of the things that I personally found to be a huge contrast between Fallout 1 and 2 versus 3, 4, and New Vegas was that it certainly is a lot more crass than even Fallout 3. I think that if you've never played 1 and 2, you would think like, oh man, there are some themes in Fallout 3 that are, are very mature you know, centric, but that's actually just a pale comparison to the original Fallout 1 and 2. It, it's sort of neutered like the the more mature aspects that were in Fallout 1 and 2. And when I saw that, I'll be frank with you, I really enjoyed the, the fact that it kind of felt genuine. It didn't feel as much like it was just fiction. It really felt like real people having real interactions or just like they depicted some of the crudeness that people say to each other back and forth in real life injected into this game. And so like, that's what I, my huge takeaway for Fallout 1 is. Yes, it still has like those goofier elements from time to time. And uh, you know, of course it just has those sci-fi Fallout elements, but it's the dialogue that really kind of struck me. And of course, then there's just the fact that it's like such an old game. I think it's like 1997. And yet you do genuinely get the sense of ex exploration, just the idea of discovery and the things you can discover in the world of Fallout 1 is it's, it's kind of, Wow, it's just a rabbit hole is basically where I'm getting at. I ended up really, really loving Fallout 1. And then I move on to Fallout 2 and I didn't even look into some of the, the things that pe the game was criticized for. 
And once I kind of got the game going, then I started looking up videos just to see what people were saying about it. And I can see, like, the tutorial area was really bad. Apparently, that was a mandate from the producers and not from the developers. And, like, there's a whole development hell that went on with that game, apparently. But at the end of it, I felt like Fallout 2 was still a great game. It was a little more goofier than Fallout 1. I felt like there was a lot more humor that kind of uh, got injected into that one. I felt like there was a better balance with Fallout 1, but with Fallout 2, I felt like it just kind of ramped up the goofy. But there's also even more crassness that's sort of included in this one, I believe. This is just me going off of my memory. So if a fan is watching this that like, knows these games from front to back and are sort of like, uh, what the heck is he talking about? I'm just going off of memory. I might do like a more produced video in the future, but this one's just sort of like off off the, the cuff. And basically what I'm, what I'm saying here is that after I played both of these two games, I realized that they're, they're both amazing, but also that, yeah, the, the whiplash in tone from Fallout 1 and 2 to suddenly Fallout 3 where with the, the, uh, the mediocre voice acting, but I think at the time we were all just sort of astounded by like the oblivion effect, right? Where everybody had some voice acting and it was kind of up, like unreal to see so many people with voice dialogue. It didn't matter, right? But there is definitely something that gets taken away when you hear a performance versus people that the dialogue just sounds like, like you're reading like a chat log instead of a script to a game in Fallout 1 and 2. So like that's where it's sort of like a big separation for me. I understand that obviously the gameplay got a huge radical shift as well, but I think that the transition between what Fallout originally was to what Fallout 3 would become, which is like a hybrid between the original Fallout and of course the, the engine that they used in Oblivion, it, it's a really, really solid baby that they made together. And so like that's still going to always be something that I really cherish about Fallout 3. The sense of exploration in that game is still astounding. The level of immersion that you get in that game is astounding because of the, the first person aspect and, you know, just being able to go through the environments through the eyes of the vault dweller, you know, it's, it's always going to be great. And so I, I would never try to go back in that regard. But like, yeah, so then you go to Fallout 4 and now all of a sudden you get a little bit more of a like Hollywood sort of feel to the, the story. And I get it now, but like, I still don't hate any of those games. Again, I'd like to argue that I played these games in the perfect order. Fallout 3 was sort of like, oh, wow, I see what everybody's been like telling me that I've been missing out on. Like, I love the Brotherhood of Steel. I love the Enclave. I love super mutants. You know, I love the whole idea of the vaults and, and everything, the ghouls and the feral ghouls and ev like all of it. And that, that, that game still introduces you to all those elements. And suddenly I'm like, oh, I am now a Fallout fan because I love all these things. And these are all things that were in Fallout 1 and 2. So, you know, you go backwards and you get those elements again, just a little bit better written than it was in the past. So, yeah, I basically what I'm trying to say here, though, is if nothing else, fans of the old school 1 and 2 Fallout games, I understand where you're coming from. That being said, if you have that common opinion that like three and four are somehow vastly inferior, I just don't see it. I get what are the strong elements of one and two. And if you're really pining for those and it's not in those games, then sadly, I understand what you're talking about. Like whether it be the hardcore turn-based like RPG elements or the thing that again, I love the most, which is just the sincerity of the writing. If you've never played Fallout one and two and you have a Steam Deck, <laughs> definitely put it on your steam deck and play it that way there's community controls that you can download and it plays fantastically you'll have a great great time i promise you i guess i was inspired to do this because the show came out it's getting glowing reviews no pun intended for radiation or whatever stupid joke you can make out of that i just think the the show is great so far i haven't finished it yet just yet it also has a tonal shift from all of the games. I just accept the fact as a Fallout fan that tonal shifts are gonna happen throughout the entire series. So the show ends up being fantastic when I just let go of the idea of it being tonally similar to like Fallout 3, 4, or heaven forbid, 1 and 2. Like that that's like 80s filth sort of levels of depravity. So I would never would have expected that. But still, you know, it definitely goes places. I'm not trying to say it's like toddler's version of Fallout, but it inspired me to make this video. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, but I just never took the time to do, like go back and replay the games a bit to do the research to get like a really solid script going. Again, I decided to just do this off the cuff just because the show kind of inspired me in a way. 
And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you took something away from it. Again, last thing I just want to say, if nothing else, if you've never played Fallout 1 and 2, they are worth your time. I just highly recommend you go in with a beginner's guide so that you don't get overwhelmed at the very start of the game and you lose to a rat. <laughs> don't let that happen to you like it happened to me in 1997, okay? All right, take care, guys.